This is Law of Attraction Explored. I'm Tim Grimes. I want to let you know about my new book, Money Your Friend. It's full of helpful advice that if you're a fan of the show, you're very likely to find useful. So the link for Money Your Friend can be found in this episode's description. Go get the book if you haven't already done so, and enjoy the episode. So one thing that I find very interesting is the profundity of these law of attraction and manifesting concepts and how they are able to be so profound and at the same time so practical. And this is something that we see time and time again, where by implementing these ideas into our life, we are able to improve essential aspects of our lives such as our health, or our relationships with loved ones, or our finances, or our employment, or other significant aspects of our life. However, even though these ideas are meant to be applied in a very practical manner, they are not easy to apply for most of us. It often seems like the deeper we get, the more difficult it can be to apply these ideas. One of probably the most important concepts to explore when it comes to implementing these law of attraction ideas is God is supply. God is supply. If we were to use more psychological, non-spiritual sounding language, we could say something like, our imagination creates our reality, as Neville Goddard liked to say. Or, our imagination is the dominant force in our life, to paraphrase Emile Kuwe. But today, because so much of this great law of attraction information does use spiritual language, let's look at that phrase, God is supply, once more. And consider it. Consider the depth. Because I know this phrase is a constant reminder and teaching tool for how to directly apply these ideas, or one could say principles, into my life and probably your life. It's a phenomenally deep phrase and concept to try to integrate into our lives. And it is not something that can be sugar-coated or marketed or made superficial and be effective sustainably, in my opinion. You know, when we hear something like, God is supply, many people use it almost in this marketable way, as if God could be marketable, as if supply could be marketable. This is not how it is. This concept, God is supply, is something we really must contemplate and integrate in order to appreciate it. And when we start to do that earnestly, I think that we will start to see the benefits in all parts of our life. Supply, obviously, is not just money. It's not just financial wealth, but it is wealth and abundance and health in all aspects of our life in various ways. But the understanding and application of it is not something that is easy. And I hope that this episode makes that more clear to you. And when people talk about recognizing God as supply and make it seem like it's something easy and you should be able to do it easily, they are in all likelihood misguided or simply not telling you the truth. So let's turn to good guidance right now. I'm going to read from two of the teachers who, in my opinion, articulate this idea and how to integrate it into our lives better than anyone in the law of attraction space and that we've read from many times. First, we'll hear from H. Emily Cady, and then we will hear from Joel Goldsmith. This is something that H. Emily Cady wrote 
in her essay, Finding the Christ in Ourselves. Again, what she's saying here is not something just to hear, but something to contemplate and meditate upon. She writes, This matter of trusting the Christ within to do all things for us, realizing that we are one with Christ and that to Christ is given all power, is not something that comes to any of us spontaneously. It comes by persistent effort. We begin by determining that we will trust Him as our deliverance, as our health, our riches, our wisdom, our all. And we keep on by a labored effort until we form a spiritual habit. No habit bursts full-grown into our lives, but comes from a succession of little acts. When you see anyone doing the works of Christ, healing the sick, loosing the bound, and so forth, by the word of truth spoken in faith, you may be sure that this faith did not come to him from some outside source all at once. If you knew the facts, you would probably know of days and nights when with clenched fists and set teeth the person held fast to the Christ within, trusting where they could not trace until he found himself possessing the very faith of Jesus. If we want the Father within, which is the Christ, to manifest as all things through us, we must learn to keep the mortal of us still, to still all its doubts and fears and false beliefs, and to hold rigidly to the Christ only. In his name, we may speak the words of healing, of peace, and of deliverance to others. But as Jesus said of himself, so we must also say of ourselves, I do nothing on my own, and the Father who dwells in me does his works. He is the ever-present power to overcome all errors, sickness, weakness, ignorance, or whatever they may be. We claim this power or bring it into our consciousness where it is of practical use by declaring over and over that it is ours already. Saying and trying to realize Christ is my wisdom, therefore I know truth, will in a short time make us understand spiritual things better than months of study will do. Our saying, Christ is my strength, I cannot be weak or frail, will make us strong enough to meet any emergency with calm assurance. So does H. Emily Cady make that sound like it's something easy? Or something you can just take an online course and learn in three weeks or three months? These ideas are very real, but the way that they're spoken about usually is unreal, fantastical. But the depth and power of them is something we can feel and experience in our own lives by earnestly and diligently working on them from within. Here's Joel Goldsmith from Invisible Supply, a book that we have read from several times. He says, God is supply. When we have God, we have supply. Our task is to acknowledge God and realize Him as the activity, the source, and the law of supply. We must acknowledge God as our sufficiency, not look to our jobs, our money, our rich relatives, benevolences, or government. Like Moses, we may find manna falling from the sky if it cannot come any other way, or water from the rocks. Or like Elijah, we may find cakes baked on the very stones in front of us, or ravens bringing food, or a widow sharing her might. Anything can happen and be assured there will be an abundance. Abundance can be experienced by each and every one of us the moment we no longer rely on man whose breath is in his nostrils and realize God as the source. If you hold in your consciousness that God is the only source of your supply, you will always have your supply made evident to you even before you need it, regardless of what anyone does. The blockage is only in your belief that someone can give it or withhold it. For example, 
there is no better way for a salesperson to fail than to believe that business depends upon the goodwill of customers. That is a fine way to limit oneself. Understanding God as the activity of all business may not compel Jones or Smith to buy from you, but it will result in an abundance of sales every week, many times not from the customers you expect. What difference does it make to whom you make the sales? The important thing is that the sales be made. You may say, but I do recognize God as the source. How often and how consistently do you? It must be more than an occasional thought. It must be a continuous activity until your consciousness is so imbued with the realization of God as the source that it becomes automatic and you no longer need to consciously think of it. Then the flow begins. So those were two great Law of Attraction type of teachers, H.M. Lee Cady and Joel Goldsmith, describing the process of integrating this amazingly powerful phrase and concept. God is supply. God is my supply. And I hope you see more clearly than before that this is not something to be said simply to say it. And it's not something to think about, just to think about it. It is something to integrate and live. And that is the work. And that is the worthwhile work and reason for doing so many of these type of practices. <laughs>